Good morning, and welcome to the sermon for August 30th from Atwood United Church and Trinity United Church in Listowel. If you're just viewing us on YouTube and not joining in our weekly Zoom services, we will be having a joint outdoor service on September 13th at 10 a.m. at the Lions Pavilion in Atwood. Um, as most of you probably know, it is covered. So, you know, if we do have some precipitation, uh, we will we will be safe underneath. Masks are optional because we'll be outdoors and physical distancing will be required. Even outdoors, we still have to follow public health protocols. We have some special music planned and, 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 and we may experiment just a bit with how we'll do church, how we'll do music once we open our doors again in October. We hope you'll join us. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 to 15, and I'm reading from the message. Moses was shepherding the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. He led the flock to the west end of the wilderness and came to the mountain of God, Horeb. The angel of God appeared to him in flames of fire blazing out of the middle of a bush. He looked. The bush, the bush was blazing away, but it didn't burn up. Moses said, what's going on here? I can't believe this. Amazing. Why doesn't the bush burn up? God saw that he had stopped to look. God called to him from out of the bush. Moses, Moses. He said, yes, I'm right here. God said, don't come any closer. Remove your sandals from your feet. You're standing on holy ground. Then God said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, afraid to look at God. God said, I've taken a good long look at the affliction of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cries for deliverance from their slave masters. I know all about their pain. And now I have come down to help them, pry them loose from the grip of Egypt, get them out of that country and bring them to a good land with wide open spaces, a land lush with milk and honey, the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. The Israelite cry for help has come to me, and I've seen for myself how cruelly they're being treated by the Egyptians. It's time for you to go back. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the people of Israel, out of Egypt. Moses answered God, but why me? What makes you think that I could ever go to Pharaoh and lead the children of Israel out of Egypt? I'll be with you, God said, and this will be the proof that I am the one who sent you. When you have brought my people out of Egypt, you will worship God right here at this very mountain. Then Moses said to God, suppose I go back to the people and, and, and they ask me, after I tell them that the God of your father sent me to you, what is his name? What do I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. Tell the people of Israel, I am sent me to you. God continued with Moses, this is what you're to say to the Israelites. God, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob sent me to you. This has always been my name and this is how I always will be known. And may God add a blessing to the reading of God's holy word. To say I was excited when I saw that this was today's reading from the Old Testament is an understatement. You might be wondering why I was so excited to read about Moses' encounter with a burning bush. It's a story we may all be familiar with. Moses investigating this strange sight, this burning bush that isn't really burning at all, hearing God calling him from out of the flames, Moses, Moses, bring my people out of Egypt. But it was God's reply to Moses' question that caused my excitement. Moses wants to know what he's to say if the people of Israel ask, what is the name of the one who sent him? And the next five words reveal everything about God that we ever wanted to know. I am who I am. For me, these are strong words, powerful words as to who God really is. But who is this God that doesn't seem to require a proper name? If we are looking for someone specific, we don't get the answer here. As a matter of fact, some interpret this phrase as, I am what I am. 
which begs the question, is it even a someone at all? A few weeks ago, we took our trailer to a friend's cabin for the weekend. This, this cabin is in a secluded place, unseen from the no winter maintenance roadway. It sits right beside a bush at the bottom of a sloping hill and, and makes you feel that you are far from any kind of civilization when in fact, farmland surrounds this cabin on all sides and busy towns are, are only a 20 minute drive away. It is a peaceful spot, a well-maintained, beautifully landscaped little piece of paradise where unplugging from the world is not hard to do because cell phone reception there is sketchy at most. It was at this spot where I sat in the quiet of a warm and sunny Saturday morning, contemplating who God was to me. I was, I was thinking of names to call this God, this I am. Names like father, mother, friend, comforter, rescuer, forgiver. Names of ways that God has been to me at certain times in my life. And it struck me as I was sitting there in the warmth of the mid-morning sun, was I limiting God by trying to give God a name or a purpose? And as I sat in this place of beauty and peace, I realized that that God was also the wind rustling through the leaves of the trees, that God was the Christmas of a midsummer morning, and as the sun rose, God was also the warmth of its rays. God was the quiet of the evening and the crackling of the burning logs on the campfire. God was the chill of the night air and the coziness, the coziness of the warm blanket. God was the laughter and conversation of good friends. And God was the moments of silence, silence as we listened to the frogs in the nearby pond. God it is all around us. I am is not a person or a figure, not a gender or an identity, not a place or a thing. I am is life, the life around us and the life inside us. God can be many different things to different people, father, mother, guide, redeemer, savior. God can take on different forms depending on what any one person is going through in their life. Recently, I started taking the 401 to get to my daughter's house in Cambridge when I go to babysit my granddaughter. The 401 scares me. I get anxiety just by being on it in, in, in any vehicle, let alone driving on it. That meant that for the last a uh, year and a half that my weekly drive to Cambridge was an hour and 20 minutes, plus my drive home again. But with road construction and detours, my drive was getting longer. And, and one morning I was running a bit late. You know, we do those things. We sleep in a little bit and we think we have all kinds of time. And then all of a sudden you look and like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be late. So I thought to myself, just suck it up and do it. Just drive the 401. And as I was driving on Highway 8 and, and the 401 was getting closer, I said to God, I need you here riding shotgun. Don't you dare get out of this car. Stay right here until I get off this highway. I needed God's presence with me in my car to ease my anxiety. And I needed God as courage when driving this highway I had never before driven. And God didn't fail. And God was the accomplishment I felt for taking the chance. And God was the confidence that I needed to do it again the next week. But sometimes we may look at God with, with tunnel vision. We may be crying up to the heavens for the God to be a comforter in the midst of our anguish, only to miss that God is right beside us in the comforting arms of a good friend. We may miss God as, as provider for the blessings we received when we focus on God as punisher for the blessings we thought we should have and didn't get. If we only see God, if we only see God's power in the thunder and lightning, we may miss God's power in the beauty of a rainbow. 
if we think of God as a as a, a white-haired old man that that lives somewhere up there. We miss God in the life that is around us here on earth. Family, friends, music, laughter, a new baby, a, a cool summer breeze, or the warmth of the winter sun. God can be the creator who created everything from the tallest mountain to the tiniest ant. But all God can also be creation itself. It's not hard to see God in everything when we see God as everything. Another interpretation of I am who I am is I will be what I will be. As our faith matures, as our circumstances change, as we experience the highs and lows of life, one thing that never changes is God. How we use God throughout our lifetime may change, but God's self never changes. God is I am, but God is also I will be. Maybe today we need God as listener, as friend. Maybe today we need God as, as sunshine and less humid days. Maybe today we need God as justice and change. But tomorrow, who knows what we'll need God to be tomorrow? Healer, forgiver, assurer. But the one thing we can depend on, God will always be God. I am who I am, what I am and what I will be. The same yesterday, the same today, and the same tomorrow. And that should cause excitement in all of us. Amen.